I've been digging deep into early garage rock of late, and a thought came to me. Garage rock embodied a lot of the traits that would spark proto-punk, which of course inspired the birth of punk rock in the 1970s. But who was the first proto-punk band? Today we're going to explore that question and why that, definitively, should go to the Sonics. The term proto is defined as original or primitive. It's what came before or what led to something that followed. So proto-punk led to punk. It's characterized by a raw, minimalistic approach to rock music paired with a rebellious attitude that was often reflected in the vocal delivery and lyrics. Many of these things overlapped heavily with garage rock. Bands that played proto-punk often challenged the status quo, both musically and culturally. They stripped rock to its bare essentials, rejecting the excess and production of mainstream rock in favor for a more direct, in-your-face style. Again, similar to garage rock. And nowhere was this burgeoning sound more potent than in the Pacific Northwest, where a group of young men formed a band that would come to define not just garage rock, but the earliest of the proto-punk sound, the Sonics. Welcome to Poetic Wax. I'm your host, Andy Fenstermaker, and I bring you stories from the history within my record collection, songs, albums, bands, every single week. Today, I'm pulling out a handful of original pressings by the legendary garage rock band, the Sonics from the Pacific Northwest. If you aren't familiar with these guys, I really wouldn't be surprised. I mean, the albums are pretty much 60 years old. You're in for a treat, though. This band is revolutionary, and you can directly tie pioneers of quite a few other genres in rock over the past half century to their 1965 debut album, Here Are the Sonics, and their 1966 follow-up, Boom! The Birth of Garage Rock and Proto-Punk. Volume 2 of the Encyclopedia of 20th Century Technology calls the electric guitar, which was invented in the early 1930s, the most important instrument of the 1950s and 1960s. It served as the gateway to the birth of electric blues, rock and roll, and literally everything that came after it. In the early 1960s, young musicians, often teenagers with little to no training, first picked up guitars, banged on drums, sang with raw emotion in garages across America. The sounds they created were unpolished, energetic, completely rebellious. This was garage rock, a genre born out of the desire to break free from that polished commercial music dominating airwaves of the day. It was music that spoke directly to other youth, reflecting frustrations, joys, their desire to push against the boundaries of what was really expected. Garage rock didn't just emerge in a vacuum. It was a direct response to the cultural and societal upheaval of the time. The early 1960s were marked by significant changes. You had the civil rights movement. You had anti-war protests, a growing sense of disillusionment with the traditional values. I mean, the heyday of the 1950s just seemed so out of reach. There was a trifecta here. First was the sounds of the British invasion, led by bands like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and the Kinks. This music had a profound impact on young American youth, and a subset of that took that inspiration to form their own bands. But instead of mimicking the polished sounds coming from across the Atlantic, these musicians created something more immediate and raw, something that would eventually lay the foundation for both proto-punk, and punk. Next, you had the traits of early surf rock. Acts like Link Ray and his 1958 single, Rumble, which... <laughs> Next, you had the traits of early surf rock. Acts like Link Ray and his 1958 single, Rumble, which featured a distorted, clanging guitar sound. And finally, early garage rock groups pulled in a third influence, R&B acts like Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley, and hell, even Richie Valens. The Pacific Northwest, birthplace of raw power. The Pacific Northwest was a hotbed for garage rock in the early 1960s. In a piece titled Proto-Punk, the garage bands 
Lester Bangs wrote, The origins of garage rock as a genre can be traced to California and the Pacific Northwest in the early 60s. That region particularly around Seattle and Tacoma, was home to a number of bands that were pushing the boundaries of rock music. You had the Kingsmen and the Wailers, but none pushed harder and faster than the Sonics. Formed in Tacoma, Washington in 1960, the Sonics were the epitome of energy and aggression. They took basic elements of rock and cranked them up to 11. An early lineup of the Sonics included Jerry Rosley on vocals and keyboards. Rosley remains with the band to this day. It, yes, that's more than 60 years later. There was Larry Paripa on guitar, another mainstay, and his older brother Andy on bass. And there was Bob Bennett on drums and Rob Lind on saxophone. In the decades since their debut, the lineup has seen a number of changes, though Jerry, Rob, and Larry remain as of 2024. Each member brought something unique, but it was their collective chemistry that made the Sonics a force to be reckoned with. Larry's distorted guitar riffs combined with Bob's pounding percussion and Rosley's wild, almost unhinged vocals created a sound that was unlike anything else at the time. It was loud, it was fast, it was completely rebellious, a perfect reflection of the angst and energy of the youth of 1960s Pacific Northwest. Like other garage bands of the day, like the Wailers, the Sonics were heavily influenced by the raw R&B sounds of the 1950s, as well as early rock and roll. But unlike others of the day who were also influenced by this music, they made their sound their own without overtly imitating them. This created a sound that was dirtier, meaner, and a hell of a lot more aggressive. I mentioned the Wailers. You can't talk about the Sonics without giving a nod to the influence the Wailers had on them as well. Their live performances as well were completely legendary, full of energy and intensity, and it was at one of those early shows that they caught the attention of Etiquette Records, a small label founded by Buck Ormsby of the Wailers. A sonic boom of music. In 1965, the Sonics released their debut album, Here Are the Sonics, on Etiquette Records. This album would go on to become one of the most influential records in the history of garage rock and protopunk. Recorded quickly and on a tight budget at audio recording in Seattle, Here Are the Sonics captured the unfiltered energy of the band. It wasn't polished or refined, instead it was a sonic assault, made even more abrasive by wild primal vocals. The album featured a mix of original songs and covers, all delivered with the Sonic's signature ferocity. Tracks like The Witch, Strict Nine, and Psycho all became instant classics, all dark and chaotic. The Sonics didn't just play these songs, they attacked them with grit and angst. They're abrasive and undeniably compelling, with the use of distortion and reverb which was groundbreaking at the time. And again, all of this was made even more so thanks to the feral vocal screams. Locally and regionally, Here Are the Sonics was a hit. The band's reputation as the wildest, most intense act in the Pacific Northwest certainly helped elevate them among the local youth. And the release became quite the party album as well. In fact, I've owned a number of these original pressings over the years always trading up to the higher quality. And my current one is still beat to hell. The Witch would become the biggest selling local single in the history of the Northwest at the time, despite radio play restrictions due to questionable subject matter that was anything but puritanical. Nationally, the album didn't make much of a commercial impact, at least not initially. But as the years went by, Here Are the Sonics gained quite the cult following eventually being recognized as a seminal work that laid the groundwork for the punk rock movement. The Sonic sound was a direct reflection of their influences. They took that raw energy of early rock and roll, the rebellious spirit of R&B, and the loud, aggressive sounds of contemporary garage bands like the Wailers, and they turned it all up a notch. The result was a sound that was uniquely theirs, and one that would go on to influence some of the biggest names in punk and rock music. The roots of proto-punk, punk rock, alt-rock, and even grunge can all be traced back to Here Are the Sonics. 
pioneers of punk. In many ways, the Sonics were the first proto-punk band, and thus pioneers of punk rock. Early garage rock was even dubbed as garage punk at times, or even 60s punk, depending on how raw and gritty it was. All of this set the stage for the punk explosion that would follow a decade later. However, the question of which band could truly be called the first proto-punk act is a matter of wide debate. The Velvet Underground, The Stooges, MC5, all three are often cited as pioneers of the genre, and rightly so. Each of these bands brought something unique to the proto-punk sound, and each of them contributed to the birth of punk rock. You have the dark avant-garde style of the Velvet Underground, the raw power, pun entirely intended, of the Stooges, and you had the radical, politically charged energy of MC5. But the Sonics were doing something just as revolutionary, and they were doing it years before the others. You can hear traces of the Sonics' influence in the music of fellow proto-punk bands like the Stooges, punk rockers like the Cramps, the Ramones, and the Clash. They all drew inspiration from the minimalistic, aggressive style and sound of the Sonics. Even grunge legends like Mud Honey and Nirvana cited the Sonics as a major influence on their music, with Kurt Cobain even calling them, quote, the most punk band of all time. In the decades following their debut, the Sonics continued to record and perform, though they never really achieved the commercial success they deserved. Still, their legacy is undeniable. They were the embodiment of garage rock and proto-punk spirit. Raw, rebellious, unapologetically loud. They didn't just play rock and roll, they lived it. And in doing so, they helped shape the future of music. I credit the Sonics as being the first proto-punk band. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Yes, plenty of others could also hold that crown, uh, one of which is actually the Stooges. In the next video, I share a legend of a painted guitar and how it contributed to the Stooges frontman, Iggy Pop, getting a different crown, the godfather of punk. I'm Andy, this is the Fence Post Vinyl Channel, this has been another episode of Poetic Wax, and I'll see you in the next video.